Shalom, peace, blessings, love to you and your families. And may how will bless the sins here as always. So in this video, we're going to talk about our fruitful thoughts. We're going to talk about the vineyard of the Most High Yahweh. Let's start off in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach, when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain. When the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim. When the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, when the people rise up at the sound of birds, but all their songs grow faint. When the people are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms, all right, keep this in mind because we're definitely going to bring this out later on through the spirit of the Most High. So it says, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire no longer is stirred, then people go to their eternal home and mourners go about the streets. So this is why in these times and in these days, the Most High God says that he will honor those who honor him. You must remember Yahweh your God and he will remember you. Isaiah 62 and 8 Yahweh has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm Never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies And never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled But those who harvest it will eat it and praise Yahweh so this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says those who sacrifice stink offerings honor him and to the blameless he will show his ways. So the Most High Yahweh expects us to be thankful for what he is doing with us and revealing to us. Okay? Because this is the fruit of our deeds. Again. Those who harvest it, in other words, those who can get it, those who can perceive it and understand it, will eat it, and they will praise Yahweh their God. And those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. So now let's read Isaiah chapter 5, verse 3, the song of the vineyard. Now you dwellers in Yarawashalom and the people of Yahweh, the judge between me in my vineyard what more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it when I look for good grapes why did it yield only bad now I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed I will break down its wall and it will be trampled I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. Verse 7. The vineyard of Yahweh Almighty is the nation of Yasharal, and the people of Yahweh are the vines he delighted in. And he looked for justice but saw bloodshed for righteousness but heard cries of distress okay so basically this is how our people are living they're living in times of distress you know times of famine times of darkness so this is why you need to seek your how your God so that he can restore you so he can heal you so you he can hear your prayers so let's read this in Genesis chapter 30, verse 37. It says, Jacob prospers. Jacob, however, took fresh cut branches from poplar, 
almond and plain trees and made white strips on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all the watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in heat and came to drink, they made it in front of the branches and they bore young that were streaked and speckled or spotted. So when you read further, it tells you how the speckled and spotted sheep belonged to Jacob and the plain ones he gave to Laban, all right, Rachel's father. So I, br I bring this out because the most high Yahweh, right? He want us to understand this here. As you can see, right, we could read a couple of verses back. It says, Jacob, however, took fresh cut branches from poplar, almond and plane trees, and made white strips on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Okay, so this represented something. We're going to find out what this represented. Because, you see, we, right, we, Yashara as a nation, we got devoured down to the branches. Just like this. Let's go ahead and show you that. Isaiah chapter 27 verse 6. It says, In days to come, Jacob will take root. Yashara will bud and blossom and fill all the world with fruit. Let's go ahead and continue reading. Has Yahweh struck her as he struck down those who struck her? Has she been killed as those who who were killed, sorry, who killed her. All right, so basically the Most High Yahweh was saying, uh, uh, all who devour us will be devoured, in other words, okay? Let's go ahead and read this here. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the seas. All right, so this is the reason why we read here. In days to come, Jacob will take root, Yahshua will bud and blossom and fill all the world with fruit. So that's talking about the wisdom, the knowledge of the Most High Yahweh that He gives to us in our minds. Okay? So let's go ahead and read this here. Joel chapter 1 verse 5. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Well, all you drinkers of wine. Well, because of the new wine, for it has been snatched from your lips. A nation has invaded my land, a mighty army without number. It has the teeth of a lion, the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. You see what I'm saying? So now, again, Genesis 30 and 37. However, Jacob took fresh cut branches from poplar, almond, and plain trees and made white strips on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood of the branches. Why? Because the Most High God tells us in uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16, if I'm not mistaken, it says this here. But all who devoured you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plundered you will be plundered. All who make spoil of you, I will despoil you. Like it tells us in Micah chapter 4, verse 13. Look what it says here. Rise and thresh, daughter Zion. For I will give you horns of iron. I will give you hooves of bronze. And you will break to pieces many nations. Right? Because many nations have devoured us. It says, you will devote their ill-gotten gains to Yahweh, their wealth to the Lord of all the earth. Okay, so again, this is what it means to rise up, to awake, as we read in Joel, chapter 1, verse 5. Oh, it says, awake, you drunkards, and weep well, all you drinkers of wine. See that? That's why the Most High Yahweh says, to awake. And shake off the dust 
Isaiah 52 and 2. Shake off your dust. Rise up. Sit in throne. Yahweh Shalom. Free yourself from the chains on your neck. Daughter Zion. Now a captive. You see that? You got that Assyrian yoke on your neck. Let's go ahead and show you this here. Isaiah 14 and 25. That says here. Well, let's start off at verse 24. Yahweh Almighty has sworn, right? The Most High God doesn't relent. He doesn't take back his words. So look what it says. Yahweh Almighty has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so it will be. And as I have purposed, so it will happen. It says, I will crush the Assyrian in my land. On my mountains, I will trample him down. His yoke will be taken from my people and his burden removed from their shoulders. Verse 26. This is the plan determined for the whole world. All right. So you see why I'm telling the people to get with the program. If not, you're going to be left out in darkness. You know, I'm not threatening you. I'm just suggesting that you get with the program. This is the plan determined for the whole world. You cannot stop this, all right? As much as you may want to stop it, but you're just a mere mortal. And these days, you're going to realize that. So that's why the Most High Yahweh says either you get with the program or you can be left out. The Most High God is not playing around. In these times and in these days, He has sworn that all peoples will bow down and all tongues will swear that Yahweh is God and Savior alone. Okay, so this is the plan determined for the whole world. This is the hand stretched out over all nations. Verse 27 For Yahweh Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? So, this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh he, uh, offers, you know, peace and, uh, he offers basically salvation for all of those that are willing and obedient. You know, like it says here in Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says Yahweh. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. You see what I'm saying? So the Most High God says that He will give you the increase. You will be able to get your fruitful thoughts. You will be able to understand His words. And it will go well with you. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. And who is the sword? Well, the Most High God told you, Esau is the physical sword. All right? The spiritual sword is Yahweh, your God, His words. Okay? That's what it tells us. Yahweh, your God, is your glorious sword. So if you go against His words, you will be devoured. All right? And the Most High God will give you into the hands of your enemy, and, you know, you will be devoured by the physical sword. Okay? The Most High God says how He gave Esau, right? The blessing of the sword. Was not Esau Isaac's son also? So the Most High God blessed Esau with the physical things okay this is the reason why they are drunk with those physical things this is the reason why you know they they worship those physical things right so this is why the most high god says that we the descendants of jacob we're spiritual we're going to continue to be spiritual we're going to continue to follow in the ways of yahweh our god who is you know the lord of spirits so it says here, but if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. So now let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and talk about our fruitful thoughts. Jeremiah chapter one, verse eleven. It says the word of Yahweh came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. Verse twelve. Yahweh said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. All right, so again, why an almond tree, you may ask. Well, we're going to understand something here. 
Because the Most High God says that his people are going to be sold to the Greeks, right? And uh, the Greek word for almond is amygdala, all right? Amygdala. So let's go ahead and uh, read this here. This is a wiki link. Amygdala. It says the amygdala or amygdala are two almond-shaped groups of nuclei located deep and medially within the temporal lobes of the brain and complex vertebrates including humans right let's not you know let's not also forget they have made a movie a long time ago you know i was a little child when they made this movie called congo and in this movie they had the talking gorilla called amy right remember it's me amy right which you know it had this uh this little device on its hand that made it talk because it registered the brain waves or whatever, right? So, let's understand this here, people. The Most High God says that uh, in these times and in these days, His words were going to be written in our mind. See that? This is the reason why these people worship the penile gland. You know, they worship the, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the the brain. Okay, because the Most High God says that they are carnal. They're not spiritual. Plenty of uh, uh, you know of this penile penile gland worship in many religions all right it would they worship the the the, the penile gland the, the you know the pine cone all these symbols which we don't have to go over you understand that there's, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there there's plenty of websites you you could do your own research on but just bringing this out to let you know that this is what they do all right so we're gonna read a little bit about the amygdala so let's go ahead and read this here Amygdala development. There is considerable growth within the first few years of structural development in both male and female amygdala. Within this early period, female limbic structure grows at a more rapid pace than do males. Amongst female subjects, the amygdala reaches its full growth potential approximately one and a half years before the peak of male development. The structural development of the male amygdala occurs over a longer period than in women. Alright, which we're going to talk a little bit about this, hopefully before, you know, this video ends here. And it says, despite the early development of female amygdala, they reach their growth potential sooner than males whose amygdala continue to develop. The larger relative size of the male amygdala may be attributed to this extended developmental period. In addition to longer periods of development, other neurological and hormonal factors may contribute to sex-specific developmental differences. The amygdala is rich in androgen receptors, okay? But this is the reason why you know they they play around with your mind <laughs> they want to you know they want to uh, desensitize you people out there okay so it says here nuclear receptors that bind to testosterone Adri androgen receptors play a role in the DNA binding that regulates gene expression though testosterone is present within the female hormone systems, women have lower levels of testosterone than men, which is true. And in these days, women want to have higher levels of testosterone than men. So it says, the abundance of testosterone in the male homo hormonal system may contribute to development. In addition, the gray matter volume on the amygdala is predicted by testosterone levels, which may also contribute to the increased mass of the male amygdala. In addition to sex differences, there are observable developmental differences between the right and left amygdala in both male and females. The left amygdala reaches its de developmental peak approximately one and a half to two years prior, prior to the right amygdala. Despite the early growth of the left amygdala, the right increases in value for a longer period of time. The right amygdala is associated with response to fearful stimuli as well as face recognition. 
Okay, just like that movie, Monsters, Inc. It is their job to scare people.